Zen is really interesting because uh, in Zen, uh, Zen teaching is uh, before words and speech. The truth cannot be described or explained. So, long time ago, the legend says that Buddha was on uh, in front of 1,200 of his disciples, and he wasn't saying anything. Everybody was waiting for his Dharma speech, and finally, after moments of silence, he held up one flower, and nobody understood. And finally, one disciple, Mahakashpa, smiled, and Buddha said, uh, "My true Dharma, I transmit to you." So that's the first instance of transmission of the Dharma. Cumberland, Rhode Island, October 10, 1992. People from over 15 countries have gathered at the Providence Zen Center for the opening ceremony of the newly constructed Peace Pagoda. Seven stories high, the pagoda is dedicated to our teacher's efforts to rid the world of human suffering. Tomorrow, we will celebrate the 20th anniversary of Zen Master Sung San's teaching in the West. Later, for the first time, Zen Master Sung San will give Dharma transmission to three of his senior students conferring on them the title of Zen Master and giving them the authority to form their own schools. Uh, San Sanim's story is very interesting because he was a uh, young man in Korea at the time. Uh, the Japanese had been driven out after the Second World War and so his, his country was liberated after decades of oppression. And so he was uh, studying in college and he uh, saw one day down at the Seoul station a group of communists and uh, pro-democrats, the uh, pro-democracy uh, faction fighting in front of the Seoul station. And this really hit his mind. He saw on the anniversary, this was the anniversary of the liberation from the Japanese, on the anniversary on our Independence Day, here are my own countrymen fighting together. So at that time, he completely lost hope in political action for really affecting a change in his country, and he went off to the mountains, and he realized that he had to practice. And uh, then some old monk came up to visit him, and the old monk looked in at him studying there and said, what are you doing? And he said, I'm uh, trying to understand Buddhism. And the old monk said, Buddhism is not about understanding. Buddhism is about forgetting your understanding. So he realized this monk was correct. And he said, so how can I practice then? And the monk said, I will, I will teach you. This monk obviously saw that he had a really high capacity. And the monk said, I will teach you one technique. And if you do this uh, retreat for 100 days, you will either die or you will go crazy or you will get enlightenment. In 1948, Zen Master Sung San was given transmission by his teacher, Kobongsuni, becoming the 78th patriarch in his line of Korean Zen Buddhism. Tomorrow, three of De Sansanim's students will join the ranks of Zen Master. George Bowman, Barbara Rhodes, and Mudung Sanim, who met De Sansanim almost 20 years ago. First, I went to some small lecture about Buddhism. At the lecture was a Korean monk, you know, So and Sanim. Oh, so yeah, yeah. Sanim. I had never seen a Korean monk before, so I asked him, what are you? <laughs> you know? And he said, oh, I'm a Korean monk. Oh, you're a Korean monk? 
Yes. Then he said, "Do you want what? Uh, why did you come here?" He asked me to this lecture. Oh, I want to understand Zen practicing. It wasn't a Zen discussion group, you know, just Buddhism. He said, "Oh no. Do you want to meet great Zen master?" Then I said, "Okay." Then he introduced me to De Sansoni two days later. Okay. Then that time I met Sansoni, he said to me, "Shout, who are you?" Then. Boom. In my mind, I couldn't answer, you know. But in my mind, answer came, you are my teacher. I couldn't answer, who are you? But he, who are you? Inside, stop. My mouth stopped. But inside, you are my teacher. Then at that moment, I am a student. I was looking for a place to stay, and, and, and uh, a friend of mine had seen the sign for the Zen Center, but she also had read in the paper that that same address there was an apartment for rent above it, and so I went to check out the apartment, and the apartment was too expensive for me. So I and I was afraid to go. I, that day I didn't go meet, to go knock on the door. But about three weeks later, because I read these books, if you meet a Zen master, they hit you, you know, they test you, they won't let you in the door right away. And I read all these these books about that. So I thought, well, I was afraid to go in, but finally I got the nerve to knock on the door, and and I came in, and he was just. You know, you know how he is. He's totally warm and friendly. Oh, you, we have talk next week. You please come. And you know, <laughs> so he was just really sweet and warm. And so I came to his talk. In the early days, De Sansonim, uh lived when he first moved to uh, Providence, Rhode Island. He lived on a on Doyle Avenue, which was a very poor section of town. He was fixing washing machines at the time, and uh, spoke no English and had no money. And that was our zendo in the early days. And uh, uh, we used to uh, practice in the living room of this really funky apartment, and uh, upstairs uh, from uh, us, of the apartment up above us, was a rock and roll band that practiced every night around 7 o'clock, uh, just when we would do our practice. So outside in the street there would be the noises of the streets and the boombox and kids playing and the noisy city, inner city environment, and inside a few of us were trying to sit with our teacher and upstairs the uh, rock and roll band would start and the ceiling would shake and dust would fall down and I remember uh, one occasion sitting there uh, it was very hot I was in the summer sweating and sweat was pouring off my face and I was wondering what in the world have I gotten myself into this is uh, outrageous and uh, at the end of sitting after we had done our chanting and the rock and roll band had stopped or at least paused for a few moments, uh, De Sansonim looked over at me uh, with one of those wonderful smiles with the light uh, coming out of his eyes, and he said, Georgie, just this. <laughs> that was uh, one of those wonderful moments for me that I will um, uh, remember all my life. From these small beginnings, the Providence Zen Center has grown until it now occupies some 50 acres in Cumberland, Rhode Island, and is the international head temple of the Quantum School of Zen. There are some 65 Zen centers and groups in 20 countries on five continents. In the name of the Quantum School of Zen, I would like to invite you to celebrate, invite you now to celebrate this ceremony of the 20th anniversary of um, our existence. From South Africa and Korea, from Russia, from Poland, we have come to celebrate De Sansonim's remarkable achievement. Many, many different languages we speak. Many a different tune we sing. But the meaning is all the same. Listen, listen carefully. Happy, happy 20th anniversary. <laughs> Congratulations from the Russian friend. And uh, now time of changing Russia, and also now the time when Zen came to Russia, and uh, time of establishing Zen practice in Russia. And the people, my friends in Russia, say, uh, would like to celebrate together with you this 20th anniversary, and uh, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. I wish really to thank you for that 20th anniversary. But I think that's a bit short, and it's a bit form Buddhism. So I really want to take advantage to celebrate your big, huge vow to come back again and again and again for stupid people like us, who still don't understand why we eat every day. 
I think it's a good opportunity to recognize that we are all in one family and not only our Sangha family, the whole world is like Mangus talk, the whole world is a single flower. Thank you. With deep humility, I offer a poem on Sung San San Salim's 20th anniversary of teaching in America. For 20 years, an icy wind has blown and a hard frost. For 20 years, icy wind, hard frost, frozen ground this morning. To teach Buddha's Dharma and save all beings, who better than Zen Master Sung San? His great vow, great enlightenment, penetrate the whole universe. A great shout, the lion's roar, shakes the whole universe. To save all beings, he kills, he gives life. Clear and bright, deep darkness, correct action, incorrect action, without hindrance, sometimes revealing, sometimes obscuring. He helps people in infinite ways. Everyone honors Zen Master Sung San, who has brought Korean Choge Zen Buddhism to the world. I like Pyokan singing. I'm saying it's really difficult to express uh, really what you feel uh, towards Sanzini and the light and fire that he's given us. Uh, really light and fire. Just like fall gives fire to the trees here. <laughs> and so uh, how to return it or to manifest it, I think is Sanzini's greatest wish. How do we uh, bring back uh, this great Zen spirit? Congratulations, Sansi. To the American School of Choge Order Korean Buddhism, Zen Master Sung San President. For Zen Master Sung San, America has been the beginning point for spreading the Dharma around the globe, from America to Europe, Russia, Canada, South America, Southeast Asia, Africa, and China. With his strong vow to save all beings, he has traveled constantly, going everywhere, teaching everyone the bone and marrow of Korean Buddhism. Because of his strong efforts, the Buddha's light shines around the world, showing all beings the true meaning and correct way of life. At this 20th anniversary ceremony, we celebrate his efforts with this plaque. One of the reasons Sansanim is uh, transmitting the Dharma now may be that this is a, a really historic time. This is the uh, 20 year anniversary of Korean Buddhism coming to America, Korean Zen teaching coming to America. And uh, also it, it kind of marks the uh, 
adulthood of our school. We spent 10 years really getting spoon-fed, uh, getting the Dharma right from Desan Sanim with him just teaching us everything about how to uh, bow, how to sit, how to chant, how to do all kinds of things. And the next 10 years was uh, he kind of uh, stepped back a bit while still teaching all around the world, but then his students uh, started growing up themselves and began to teach other people how to do the nuts and bolts of practicing and giving Dharma talks. And now that, 20, that 10 years has passed, and now the next 10 years maybe uh, he's stepping back even more and uh, actual Zen masters taking their place and teaching their own students. I came to the United States 10 years already. Also, uh, training is what you do no? in America. So, already three disciples already ripe. His, his practice is not ripe. So, transmission is necessary. Uh, so, this day is uh, a very important day. 20 years anniversary. Also, my teaching is ripe because they are uh, already they practice my life, so transmission. That's very wonderful. <laughs> and how did you uh, decide uh, the, to pick these three uh, people as uh, new Zen masters? Ah, uh, that is an I am not decide. He uh, practicing uh, many people uh, coming near practice, and then uh, first become Jido Bobs. I mean, or Finsi Kongan. Then uh, he. Jidabosanin test means all people coming here, then uh, any kind of question to him, then any questions are no hindrance. That's a Kongan practice. Then become Jidabosanin. Uh, Jidabosanin take three years, past three years. Then in the United States, many Zen masters over there. Then around the Dharma come back. So Dharma come back, then Everybody look at the Dharma Kambe. Oh, that's wonderful. Then uh, Dharma Kambe finish. Then, <coughs> past three years, again more teaching, three years, three years. Then, everybody said he's a teaching very wonderful. Then that means he become Zen Master, no problem. I hear many people talk to this uh, around the speech. Then decide this uh, uh, transmission. Mm. So everybody I hear his teaching, also his action, his mind, uh, any kind. So we are that means Chung means not moving mind. He means wisdom. This uh, Chung He Sang So uh, ripe. Uh, medi meditation and wisdom uh, together Meditation, practicing. wisdom, complete come together. And uh, uh, that means, right, he's, he's uh, uh, become Zen Master, the possible. Uh, so decide. We'd like to welcome you this afternoon to this really auspicious occasion, not only for the Kwanam School of Zen, but for the whole world. This is a really special occasion. It will be the first time that three Western students are given transmission in our school. So we invite you to spend some quiet time in support of our new Zen masters, and there'll be opportunity for you to have some Dharma combat with them later in the program. So until the opening bell, if we can just be quiet for a few moments. Traditionally, the rationale behind transmission is that the student has seen eye-to-eye -eye with the teacher, 
in other words, their minds have met and their minds have become one mind. So there's a, a famous expression, from mind to mind. Uh, in Korea, in Korean language, it's ishim jun shim. Uh, so from the mind of the teacher to the mind of the disciple. Uh, yet in, in Zen teaching, we always talk about how nothing is transmitted. There's a famous poem, uh, before ancient Buddha appeared, already one thing is perfectly clear. Even Shakyamuni Buddha didn't understand it. How could he transmit it to Mahakashpa? So that's kind of the paradox or the koan, if you will, the kongan of Zen practice is that uh, there's nothing to be transmitted and yet there's a transmission. Uh, there's nothing for the student to get and yet the teacher and the student have this relationship. So this will be the final opportunity for Lucifer here today <laughs> to witness the Jido Pusas, who will shortly be our newly installed Zen masters. Have one last good look at them. <laughs> you never know what's going to happen when they come down from the high seat. <laughs> said the whole world is a single flower and the whole world is so mixed up and now we have three of you three Zen masters please demonstrate to us how you three of you can make the whole world a single one single flower don't mix up the world <laughs> it's already mixed up already mixed up in your mouth <laughs> see the role of women, particularly women teachers in Zen in the West? You know, sometimes people ask me to do retreats exclusively for women, and I, I'm, I think I will do that once in a while, but I've always not particularly been uh, interested in it, and mainly because whenever I lead a retreat or go to a retreat, and there's often, it's just in the Quantum Zen School, a mixture of often 50-50, it seems, at the retreats. And after a day or two, it's like, you don't think man or woman, we're just all Dharma brothers and sisters, we're just Dharma friends, and there's no, there's no sexual, I don't feel a sexual energy or discrimination going on. And um, so I really don't think that there's much of an um, issue with it. You know, I just think that for, for office, obviously for women, it'll be encouraging to see other women get roles as teachers and, and to have the uh, status that men are given in Buddhism. And, so that's a nice thing, but I think ultimately we all have to just not attach to that and just be ourselves. Transmission name, Song Hyang. Dharma name, Tok Um. Original name, Barbara Rhodes. Poem reads, 
Before heaven and earth separate, true nature completely bright. Originally, nothing happening. Spring comes, many flowers blooming. <laughs> Sung San, October 11, 1992, Man of Duk Sung Mountain. interesting evolution that's happened. It started out and it was very informal. We used to sit around the breakfast table and he would tell us Zen stories and we'd sit together. And then came robes and then came bowls and then came young men jeonjins, and then came a, a very strict and formal discipline where we uh, practiced with him for many, many years. It's been, uh, I lived in the Zen Center for 15 years uh, and I've been practicing and coming and going the last five. So although there is a certain amount of freedom that he's giving, uh, given to us now, uh, uh, there was a great deal of uh, training and uh, discipline that went into it. I remember in the early days, uh, De Sansanim said, uh, I really want you to uh, follow my way and to just do it, to put away your opinion and your condition. And he said, if you do that and practice hard, then uh, later on, any way that you want to teach is okay with me. If you want to teach in a Burger King, great. If you want to teach in a Zen temple, okay. But uh, uh, in the early days and for many years, we really uh, followed uh, his way. Transmission name, Bo Mun. Dharma name, <laughs> Song He. Original name, George Bowman. <laughs> Everything follows the law of appearing and disappearing. All dharmas originally stillness. In no form, no name, bright moon appears over mountain. Sung San, October 11th, 1992, Man of Dopsung Mountain. <laughs> Many people nowadays talk about American Zen. What does this mean to you? American Zen, Korean Zen, European Zen, that's, yeah, that's all opposite worlds. We make American Zen, Korean Zen, Japanese Zen, Chinese Zen. So we say Zen, but Zen means don't make opposites. So we must take away. American, Korean, Chinese, European, yeah? Our European Sangha is say, to say our European Sangha, our Chinese Sangha, that's okay. Yeah, that's explanation of location. But American Zen, Chinese Zen, doesn't matter. So this is translation. <laughs> 임신년 12월 11일 덕승산인 승산설. So a transmission certificate reads, the Quantum School of Zen, Zen Master Sung San founding teacher. Certificate of transmission. Su Bong transmission name. Mudong Dharma name. Si Hoi Liao original name. The poem reads, in the clear, clear stillness, stillness, true face stands revealed. All dharmas originally empty. Pine tree is green, rock peak is white. Sun San, October 11th, Zen school, we have one style of chanting, bowing, sitting. Um, many people asked you over the years, why, what about American style? When do we have American style? That time you always said, American Zen master appear, 
then we have American style. So today, three American Zen masters appear. I think a slow, slow day style appear. Already Joji style appear, you know? Yeah, yeah he uh, maybe become Zen master, not complete our style, not trap in Zen center style, okay? Mm -hmm. Maybe Joji style appear. Maybe <laughs> Bobby also Bobby style appear. But trap Zen center, Mudong Sri transmission to me, this uh, uh, main line, okay? Main line connect, continue this tie up here, I think. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's separate. Because this transmission is Dharma, Bodhi Dharma, through the this six Pechako, same style. After six Pechako, separate six schools, or five schools, all depends on style. So maybe slow, slow. Yeah. This, uh, you know, Korean style disappear, mm -hmm. complete American style appear. Um, when you were very young, when you were 20 years, 22 years old, uh, Zen Master Kobong Sanim gave transmission to you. Mm -hmm. That time, nobody understood who you were or where you came from. No history. Mm -hmm. uh, so that style and this style are a little bit different. Yeah, that is a different because my teacher is not my star. Okay, he's uh, only transmission to Mangong, Mangong Zen Master. Then he. Uh, not so much uh, teaching uh, make school. He not make own school. Okay. So not only teaching uh, uh, this, uh, a stay big temple. So not so many uh, students. Also he think about all oh, Korean situation means all monks uh, only uh, they are uh, pride. Not so much is correct practice. So he teaching only non and uh, layman. No monks. No monk. Also not, not also not so much correct you know, organization. Only coming going teaching. Coming going teaching. He's a freedom gem master. Mm -hmm. So freedom gem master transmission mission also freedom. Not formal style. Uh -huh. But I came to the United States, not freedom teaching. Everything correct correct organization, teaching organization. Working organization, temple organization, also this uh, our uh, school organization, many organization necessary. So this uh, we have transmission also organization necessary. So Jita Bobsa, then three, past three years, then uh, around Dharma Kandev or Zen Master, then again past three years, then we check this teaching, then transmission. That's mm -hmm. our style. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Very clear. Very clear. <laughs> so, it really doesn't matter that Sun Sanim, who is a Korean-speaking uh, uh, Oriental, is transmitting the Dharma to English-speaking Westerners, uh, because this one uh, truth, which is before thinking, is the same for Koreans, for Americans, it doesn't matter. <laughs> So now uh, three American Zen masters appear. So Zen master, our, our uh, Korean Zen master maybe have no job. So what do you do, sir? Yeah, hungry time eat, and uh, uh, tired time only sleep. That's all. Thank you. I hope you do that, sir. Okay. <laughs> thank you very much. Tired time. I hope oh you yeah. Rest. Thank you. <laughs>